from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to the special Cube conversation. You know, big data workloads have evolved and the infrastructure that runs big data workloads is also evolving. Big data, AI, other emerging workloads need infrastructure that can keep up. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation with Patrick Osborne, who's the Vice President and GM of Big Data and Secondary Storage at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, at Patrick underscore Osborne. Great to see you again, thanks for coming on. Great, love to be back here. So, um, as I said up front, Big data is changing, it's evolving, and the infrastructure has to, has to also evolve. What are you seeing, Patrick, and what's HPE seeing in terms of the market forces right now driving you know, big data and, mm. and analytics? Well, I mean, some of the things that we see in the data center, um, there is a, a, you know, a continuous move to move from bare metal to virtualize, everyone's on that train, uh, mm -hmm. to containerization of existing apps, so your you know, apps of record, business mission critical apps. But really what a lot of folks are doing right now is adding additional services to those applications, those data sets, so new ways to interact, new apps, and a lot of those are being developed with a lot of techniques that revolve around big data and analytics. So we're definitely seeing you know, the pressure to, to, to modernize what you have on-prem today, but you know, you can't sit there and be static and you got to provide new services around, you know, what you're doing for your customers and a lot of those are coming in the form of this mode two type of application development. One of the things that we're seeing, everybody talks about digital transformation, mm. it's the hot buzzword of the day. To us, digital means data first. Uh, presumably you're seeing that. Are organizations organizing around their data and what does that mean for infrastructure? Yeah, absolutely. So we see uh, a lot of folks employing not only uh, technology uh, to do that. They're doing organizational techniques, so peak teams, you know, bringing together a lot of different functions. Uh, also, too, around organizing, around, uh, organizing around the data has become uh, very different right now that you've got data on the edge, right? It's coming into the core. A lot of folks are moving some of their edge to the cloud or even their core to the cloud. So you got to make a lot of decisions to be able to organize around a pretty complex um, uh, set of you know, places, physical and virtual, where your data is going to lie. So there's a lot of talk too about the data pipeline. The data pipeline used to be you had an enterprise data warehouse mm. and the pipeline was you'd go through a few people that would build some cubes and then they'd hand off a bunch of reports. The data pipelines is, it, it's getting much more complex. You've got the edge coming in, you've got you know, core, you've got the cloud which can be on-prem or, or public cloud. Yeah. Talk about the evolution of the data pipeline and what that means for infrastructure and big data workloads. Yeah, so for a lot of our customers, you know, we've got a pretty interesting business here at HPE. We do a lot with the intelligent edge, so our edge line servers in Aruba, you know, where a lot of the data is sort of sitting outside of the traditional data center. And then we have what's going on in the core, which you know, for a lot of customers, they are moving from either traditional EDW, right, or even Hadoop 1.0, if they started that, tra that transformation five to seven years ago, to a lot of things are happening now in real time, or a combination thereof. So the data types are pretty dynamic. Some of that is always getting processed out in the edge. Results are getting sent back to the core. We're also seeing a lot of folks move to real-time data analytics, or you know, some people call it fast data, right? That sits in your core data center. So you know, utilizing things like Kafka and Spark, and a lot of the techniques for persistent storage are are, are brand new. And um, you know, what all what it boils down to is it's an opportunity, but it's also very complex for our customers. What about some of the the technical trends uh, behind what's going on with big yeah. data? I mean, you've got sprawl with both data sprawl, you've got workload sprawl, um, you got developers that are dealing with a lot of complex tooling. What are you guys seeing there in terms of the big mega trends? Yeah, so um, we have a, as you know, HPE has uh, quite a few customers in the mid-range and enterprise segments. And we have some customers that are very tech forward. So uh, a lot of those customers are moving from uh, this, you know, 
Hadoop 1.0, Hadoop 2.0 system to a set of you know essentially mixed workloads that are very multi-tenant. So we see customers that have uh, essentially a mix of batch oriented workloads. They have, now they're introducing these streaming type of workloads to folks who are bringing in things like TensorFlow and GPGPUs and are trying to apply some of the techniques of AI and ML into those, into those clusters. So what we're seeing right now is that that is causing a lot of complexity, not only in the way you do your apps, but the number of applications and the number of tenants who use that data, right? So it's getting used all day long for various mm -hmm. different. Um, so now what we're seeing is it's grown up. It started as a, you know, an opportunity, a science project, a POC to now it's business critical, becoming now it's very mission critical for a lot of the services that drives. Am I correct that that those diverse workloads used to require a sort of bespoke set of infrastructure that was very siloed, and mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm inferring that that. Technology today will allow you to, to bring those workloads together on a, on a single pro, uh, a platform, is that correct? Yeah, so um, a couple of things that we offer and we've been helping customers to sort of get off the complexity train, uh, but provide them you know, flexibility and elasticity is a lot of the workloads that we did in the past were either very vertically fo focused and integrated, so one app, server, networking, uh, storage, uh, to you know, the beginning of the analytics phase, so really, really around symmetrical clusters and, and scaling them out. Now we've got a very rich and diverse set of components and infrastructure that can um, essentially allow a customer to make a data lake right, that's very scalable compute, storage-oriented nodes, GPU-oriented nodes. So it's very flexible and helps us, uh, you know, helps customers take complexity out of this, uh, out of their environment. So, in thinking about when you, when you talk to customers, mm. what are they struggling with, um, specifically as it relates to infrastructure? Again, we talked about, you know, tooling. I mean, Hadoop is well known for the, the, yep. the complexity of the tooling, but specifically from an infrastructure standpoint, what are the big complaints that you hear? Um, so a couple things that we hear is that my my budget's flat, right, for the next year, a couple years, right? So when we talked earlier in the conversation about I have to modernize, virtualize, containerizing my existing apps, that means I have to introduce new services uh, as well with a very different type of, you know, DevOps, you know, mode of, of operations. Uh, that's with all with existing staff, right? So n that's the number one, you know, issue that we hear from the customer. So anything that we can do to help um, increase the velocity of deployment, right, through automation, uh, we hear now. Frankly, the battle is for whether I'm going to run these type of workloads on prem versus off prem. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, a set of uh, of technology as well as services, enabling services with Point Next. You, know, you, you, you remember the, uh, the acquisition we made around cloud technology partners mm -hmm. to sort of right place where those workloads are going to go and become like a broker in that conversation, assist customers to make that um, to make that 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 transition, uh, and then ultimately, you know, give them a an elastic platform that's going to scale for this diverse set of workloads that's well known, sized, easy to deploy. As you get all this data, and the data is mm -hmm. you know Hadoop sort of blew up the data model. Said, okay, we're going to bring the, the, leave the data where it is, we'll yep. bring the compute there. Um, and you had a lot of Skunk Works projects growing. What about governance, security, compliance? As you have data sprawl, how are customers handling that challenge? Is it a challenge? Yeah, it certainly is a challenge. I mean, we've gone through it just recently with uh, you know GDPR is implemented, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to th think about how that's going to fit into your workflow and certainly security. Uh, uh, the, the you know the big thing that we see certainly is around um, you know if, if the data is residing outside of your traditional data center, right? That's a you know it's a big issue, right? So for us, when we have uh, edge line servers, uh, certainly a lot of things are coming in over wireless. Uh, you know, th there's a big build out and advent of five G, you know, coming out. That certainly is an area that um, customers are very concerned about uh, in terms of who has their data, who has access to it. How can you tag it? How can you make sure it's secure? So that's a big part of uh, what we're trying to provide here at HPE. What specifically is HPE doing to to address? these problems, um, products, services, partnerships, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Maybe even start with, you know, what's yep. your philosophy on infrastructure for big data and AI workloads? Yeah, so I mean, for us, we have, you know, we've over the last 
two years have really concentrated on you know essentially two areas. We have uh, the intelligent edge, right, which is you know, certainly it's been enabled by fantastic growth with our Aruba products in, in the networking space and our edge line systems. So being able to take that type of compute and get it as far out to the edge as possible. And the other piece of it is around making hybrid IT simple, right? So um, in, in that area, we want to provide a very flexible yet easy to deploy uh, set of infrastructure for big data and AI workloads, right? So we have this concept of the Elastic Platform for Analytics, right? So it helps customers uh, deploy that, um, you know, for a whole myriad of requirements, very compute oriented, storage oriented, um, GPUs, uh, cold and warm data lakes, you know, for, for that matter. And the third area that we've really focused on is the ecosystem that we bring to our customers as a, as a portfolio company is evolving rapidly, mm -hmm. right? As you know, in this big data and analytics uh, workload space, the software development portion of it is super dynamic, right? So if we can bring a, uh, a vetted, uh, well-known ecosystem to our customers as part of a solution with adv advisory services, that's definitely one of the key pieces that you know, our customers love to come to HP for. What about partnerships around things like containers and, and, and simplifying the, the developer experience? Yeah, so I mean, we've we've been pretty public about some of our, our efforts in this area around uh, one sphere, right? And some of these the models around certainly advisory uh, services in this area with some recent acquisitions. So for us, it's all about uh, automation, and we want to be able to provide that experience to the customers whether they want to develop those apps and deploy on prem. You know, we. We, we love that, right? You, I think you guys tag it as true private cloud. Yep, um, but we know that the, you know, the reality is most people are, are embracing very quickly a hybrid cloud model. And given the ability to take those apps, develop them, put them on-prem, run them off-prem is, is, you know, is pretty key for OneSphere. I remember Antonio Neri when, he, when you guys announced Apollo. Yeah. And you had the astronaut there, and, <laughs> uh, and Antonio yep. was just a lowly GM and VP at the time, and yep. now he's, of course, CEO. So he, Absolutely. who knows what's in yeah. the future. And so, <laughs> uh, but Apollo, you know, generally at the time, I was like, okay, this is a high performance computing system. We've talked about those worlds, HPC and big data coming together. Mm. Uh, it, where does a system like Apollo fit in this world of big data workloads? Yeah, so we have a, a very wide uh, product line for Apollo that helps, uh, you know, some of them are very tailored to specific workloads. If you take a look at um, the way that people are deploying these infrastructures now, multi-tenant with many different workloads, right? So we allow for some compute, you know, focused systems like the Apollo 2000. Mm -hmm. We have very balanced systems, the Apollo 4200, that allow a very good mix of CPU, memory, and uh, now customers are certainly moving to to flash and storage class memory for these type of workloads. And then Apollo 6500, which is some of the you know newer systems that we have, big memory footprint. NVIDIA GPUs, you know, allowing you to do, you know, very high calculations rates for AI and ML workloads. And we take that and we aggregate it together. And, you know, we've, we've made some recent acquisitions like Plexi, for example. Uh, a big part of this is around, you know, simplification of the networking experience, right? So you can probably see into the future of, you know, automation at the networking level, automation at the compute and storage level, right? And then, you know, having a very large and scalable data lake for customers, you know, data repositories, object, file, HDFS, uh, some pretty interesting trends in that space. Yeah, I, I'm actually really super excited about the Plexi acquisition. I think it's it, because of Flash used to be the bottleneck was the spinning disk. Mm. Flash changes, pushes the bottleneck largely to the network. Plexi can allow you guys to, to scale. And I think actually Leapfrog, you know, some of the other hyperconverged players that are out there. Yep. So super excited to see what you guys do with, with that acquisition. Um, but so, so it sounds like your focus is on optimizing the design for I.O. Yep. Um, I'm sure Flash fits in Absolutely. there. Absolutely. As well. And that's a huge accelerator for, even when you take a look at the, you know, our, our storage business, right? So three par, nimble, all Flash, certainly moving to NVMe and storage class memory for, for acceleration of other types of big data databases, right? So you, even though we're talking about Hadoop today, right now, um, you know, certainly SAP HANA, right? Scale out databases, Oracle, SQL, all these things pay, play a part in the customer's infrastructure. Okay, so you were talking before about, a uh, little bit about uh, uh, GPUs. Um, 
What is this HPE Elastic Platform for Big Data Analytics? What's that all about? Yeah, so I mean, we have a, a lot of the, the sizing and, um, and scalability falls on the shoulders of our customers. Right in in this space, especially in some of these new areas. So what we've done is we have a it's it's a it's a product slash a concept, um, and what we do is we have it. This it's called the Elastic Platform for Analytics, and it allows with all those different components that I rattled off, um, all great systems in of their own. But when it comes to very complex multi-tenant workloads, what we do is try to take the mystery out of that for our customers, to be able to deploy that cookie cutter module, and we're even going to get to a place pretty soon where we're able to offer that you know, as a consumption-based service, right? So you don't have to choose for an elastic type of you know, uh, uh, acquisition uh, experience between on-prem and, and off-prem, so we're going to provide that as well. So it's a, it's not only a set of products, it's uh, reference architectures. We do a lot of sizing with our partners, so the Hortonworks, Cloud Eras, MapRs, you know, and a lot of the, the things that are out in the open source world, so it's pretty good. So we've been covering big data, as you know, for a long, long time. Yeah. The early days of big data was like, oh, this is great, we're just going to put white boxes out there and off-the-shelf you know, storage. Well, that changed as big data got workloads became more sort of enterprise mainstream, they needed to be enterprise ready. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is, okay, I hear you, you got products, you got services, you got perspectives, a philosophy, obviously you want to sell some stuff. What has HPE done internally sure. with regard to big data? How have you transformed your own business? Yeah, so um, for us, you know, we, we want to provide a really a rich experience, not just products. And to do that, you need to uh, provide a set of services and automation. And what we've done is with uh, uh, products and solutions like InfoSight, we, we've been able to, you know, pro we call it AI for the data center, mm -hmm. or um, you know, certainly the tagline of predictive analytics is something that Nimble's brought to the table for a long time. So. To provide that level of services, InfoSight, predictive analytics, AI for the data center, right? we're running our own big data infrastructure. So it started a number of years ago, even on our three-part platforms and other products, where we had scale-up databases, we moved and transitioned to batch-oriented Hadoop, now we're you know, fully uh, embedded with uh, real-time streaming analytics that come in every day, all day long from our customers and telemetry. And we're using AI and ML techniques to, um, to not only you know, improve on what we've done, that's uh, certainly automating for the support experience, right? And, and making it easy to manage the platforms, but now introducing things like learning, automation engines, you know, recommendation engines for you know, various things for our customers to take you know, essentially the, the hands-on approach of managing the products and automate it and put it into the product. So for us, we've gone through a multi-phase, multi-year transition that's brought in things like Kafka and Spark and Elasticsearch. So we're using all these techniques in our system to provide new services for our customers as well. Okay, great. So you got your practitioners, you got some street cred. Absolutely. Um, I, can I come back on InfoSight for a minute? Um, you came through an acquisition of Nimble. Uh, it seems to us that you're a little bit ahead, maybe you say a lot of bit ahead, of the competition with regard to that capability. Um, how do you see it? Uh, where do you see InfoSight being applied across the portfolio, and and how, how much of a lead do you think you have on competitors? Um, so I'm paranoid, so I don't think we ever have a good <laughs> enough lead, right? So you got all, always got to stay grinding uh, on that on that front. But we think we have a really good product, and you know it speaks for itself. A lot of the customers, you know, love it. We've applied it to three par, you know, for example. So we came out with some. Uh, we uh, we have VM Vision for a three par that's based on InfoSight. Uh, we've got some uh, some things in the works, right, for other product lines that are you know pretty uh, that are imminent pretty soon. You can think about um, what we've done for Nimble. Uh, and 3PAR, we can apply similar type of logic to uh, Elastic Platform for Analytics, like running at, at you know, the, that type of cluster scale to automate a number of you know, uh, items that are you know, pretty pedantic for the customers to manage. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work going on within HPE to scale that as a service that we provide with most of our products. 
Okay, so where can I get more information on your, your big data offerings and what you guys are doing in that space? Yeah, so we have, uh, you can always go to hpe.com slash big data. We've got some really great information out there. Uh, we're in our run up to our big end user event that we do every June uh, in Las Vegas. It's HPE Discover. We have about 15,000 uh, of our customers and trusted partners there, and we'll be doing a number of talks. I've, I'm doing some work uh, there with uh, British Telecom. You know, we're gonna give some great talks. Those will be available online virtually. So you'll hear about not only what we're doing with our own info site and big data services, but how other customers, you know, like BT and 21st Century Fox and you know other folks are applying some of these techniques and and making a big difference, in, you know, for their business as well. That's so. That's June 19th to the 21st. It's at the Sands Convention Center yep. um, in between the Palazzo and the and the, and the Venetian. <laughs> yes. So. It's a good conference, so definitely check that out. You know, live if you can, or if yeah. not, you can you can all watch online. So, excellent, Patrick. Thanks so much for, yeah, for coming on and thanks sharing with us, us this big data evolution, and uh, we'll be watching. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube.